imagine being told you're a victim, right? Or being called a victim. It never goes well. <laughs> it never has. But the truth of the matter is, if you think about life and you think about victimization and how the roles that the genders play or men and women play, it, it essentially someone is going to end up playing the victim role. Someone is going to play the victim role because they feel sorry for themselves because they don't know how to deal with pain or fear or the negative emotions that are rampaging through their body and through their mind and through their spirit. Becoming a victim is something that happens to everyone. It doesn't mean that it happens to everyone, but it's something that can happen to everyone. How do you recognize that you're in victim mode? How do you recognize that you have gotten into a place where you can't help yourself because you can't even realize that you've immersed yourself with tools, coping mechanisms, and defense mechanisms to ensure that you self-protect as a victim? How do, you, how do you recognize that? It's not the easiest thing, trust me. And so many people end up in that position and it becomes solidified to the point where you can't get through to them. You can't tell them about themselves because they have mastered the art of not hearing about themselves. Do you, do you know anybody like that? <laughs> Becoming a victim is a process. You don't just wake up one morning and decide, I'm going to be a victim. I'm going to choose not to show it for myself. I'm not, I'm going to choose to blame others. I'm going to choose to shame others because of my lack of accountability. Because that's what victimization becomes in this sense. It is an absolute lack of taking accountability for your actions, for your responses, and your reactions to things. My mother played a victim really well, but she wasn't a victim, but she knew how to play really well. And there are some people who have mastered the art of victimization because they realize that it allows them not to take responsibility. It allows them to show up without showing up. It allows them to pretend to be present even though they themselves know they're not. In relationships, this is problematic. The reason why it's problematic is because in victim mode, whether it's a husband or the wife or the partner, you know, one partner or the other, where there's a where there's victimization in the relationship and there's a lack of accountability, that means somebody else is always trying to either communicate that or trying to highlight that other person's shortcomings or trying to point out the truth to that other person. When you become a victim and when you stop taking accountability, essentially you're not able to tell yourself the truth. And if you can't tell yourself the truth, you certainly cannot tell others their truth or the truth either. And that is a big problem. The truth is a big part of existing and coexisting together. The truth helps you to, to acknowledge your faults or flaws and to deal with the reality that you're not perfect. There's imperfection in all of us. I'm imperfect too. Yeah, you didn't know that, did you? I'm imperfect, but I'm able to own that and acknowledge that because I've decided not to be a victim, even though I had ample opportunity to become a victim. There was a time in my life where I could, I could, I wanted to become a victim. It's easy because victimization allows you to, to lay down, not show up, and pretend it's somebody else's problem and not yours. It is so easy. Why, why, why would you want to do that? The reason why you don't want to do that is because as an individual, your spiritual growth requires you to be growing. And when you're in victim mode, when you cannot look at yourself in a mirror and see your own reflection, but you're consistently seeing other people's reflection in the mirror, including your partners, that's a problem. If you see your partner every time you look in the mirror, it's easy to say, I knew it was you. It is you. It's because of you. You don't take ownership. That's accountability. Accountability is about taking ownership. It's about acknowledging your shortcomings. And in acknowledging your shortcomings, 
you realize that there's room for growth. There's there's potential here to not just grow beyond your situation and the limitations and the lack of boundaries that were created, but there's an opportunity here for truly growing as an individual. In our current climate, we have a lot of people who are becoming victims. They are subscribing to the notion of victimization because they don't want to take accountability. And sometimes taking accountability means being honest with yourself, being honest with the other person, not practicing hypocrisy because you know most of us do practice hypocrisy. Do what I say, not as I do. That's the society we're in currently. But for the relationship, the, set, the purpose of the relationship, if you recognize that you're a victim, and how do you recognize you're a victim? You can go to the internet and research what does it mean to be a victim? Just do that general search. You know, the beautiful, beautiful thing about the internet is that it will give you a lot of information. But a victim generally is a person who feels that everything is happening to them. Everybody is out to get them. Nobody understands them. Nobody can relate to them. It's me, 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 me. It's the Elmo syndrome. Me, 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 me. It's all about them. And then they become self-absorbed. They become isolated. They feel misunderstood. They feel judged. They feel picked upon. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm saying these things about specifically a victim. It doesn't mean that you're not experiencing some of these things like being judged or, you know, you can't communicate with people. That's a reality. But I'm talking specifically to people who see themselves as victims or have not identified their victims. Classic example, you're in a relationship and your partner constantly tells you, you know what, you need to get help. You know, I I'm willing to be here. I'm willing to stay in this relationship, but you need to get help. There's something wrong. And you may not need any help, but what does it hurt? Does it hurt to reach out to see if they're right? Does it hurt to reach out to see, hey, maybe if I'm the problem, then I can also be part of the solution for our relationship? Why does pride have to come into play when you're trying to work on something together? Well, what's that notion about being so proud that you don't want to give the other person the benefit but in saying you were right? How about instead of saying you were right, say, you know what? We are going to be better. Our relationship is going to improve because now we have the tools, now we have the answer, now we have the knowledge that has been presented that is showing us where to go, which direction to go. The whole notion of spiritual growth and growing as an individual is, is a process. It's not only a process, one of my best friends in Barbara just said, it's a process. It is a process and it doesn't mean that you're gonna arrive at your destination sooner then you go through the process. It's a, it's a growth. And as you grow, you're going to learn. And, and, and all the elements that are required to help you grow are not going to be missing. You cannot grow past your pain unless you acknowledge your pain. You cannot grow past your indecision unless you learn how to be decisive. You cannot grow past yourself unless you're able to understand yourself and understand who you are. It is a process. It's about the journey. We're here in this realm to journey. The journey is the process. The journey is also the growth. But most of us are too busy trying to get to a destination that we have not mapped out by not wanting to do the work. If you truly desire for your relationship to be better, whether it's with a partner, a spouse, a significant other, a child, you know, a boss, you know, those are kind of hairy. You have to do the individualistic work on yourself, and then that affects the collective. But the benefit in you not being a victim anymore is facing yourself and facing your truth. It all starts with you. Victimization stops accountability. Choose to be accountable today. Choose not to be in a victim mode anymore. Stop the blaming, stop the guilt, stop the shaming and recognize that I have to look at myself. Doesn't matter how difficult it is. You know, they say fear is not the absence of courage, it's actually courage in the, abs in, in the presence of fear. You have to be courageous, you have to want to do it. Reach out, talk to someone. 
That's all it takes. Just reach out. My name is Ingrid Felton. As always, thank you for visiting my YouTube channel. Thank you for showing up today. Thank you for sharing my videos with others. Thank you for subscribing to the videos. Um, thank you for your comments. And continue to support me because without you, I cannot keep on showing up. You know, uh, you know, uh, no man is an island. I'm not an island. I cannot do this alone. And I hope you have an amazing day. Bye.